In this video, we're going to be discussing the pivot shift test, a special test used in the assessment of ACL injuries. Oftentimes with ACL injuries that go untreated for any amount of time, the patient will describe a feeling of giving way at the knee, or the knee feels unstable at certain times while they're walking. This special test is designed to reproduce that giving way sensation that occurs during walking. To perform the pivot shift test, the patient will be positioned in supine, as you see right here, and the PT will initially elevate the patient's lower extremity off of the table about 20 to 30 degrees. Okay. From here, the pivot shift test is really performed in three stages, and each of these stages is really defined for an actual ACL injury when the test is going to be positive. If the ACL is intact and this test is going to be negative, well, you're just doing these motions and you go through them and nothing significant is going to happen. So as we go through these, just imagine that this test is going to be positive. We actually have an ACL injury. So to start off with in the first phase, the knee is in extension. Okay, As you see right here, knee is straight. And the PT is going to apply the following forces while the knee is still in extension. So number one, internal rotation force through the foot, ankle, and the tibia. Okay? To apply the internal rotation force, you're essentially going to turn the foot so that the toes face more inward or more medially. Okay? Number two, you're going to apply a valgus force just distal to the knee. So you're going to push on the lateral aspect right here medially and try to induce a valgus force. And then third, an axial load through the tibia, in the pivot shift test, the first two here are more important. Some sources will not give that axial load, but again, I'm going to list all three here. Okay, so while the knee's in extension, we have that internal rotation. We're going to apply the valgus force just distal to the knee joint line. Okay, and then using my right hand here, which is also giving that internal rotation, you're going to apply an axial load and try to compress the tibia into the femur. Okay, so you're going to apply those forces. Now at this point, while the knee is in extension and you're applying these forces, the tibia subluxes. Understand that this is not a comfortable feeling, and it may be associated with quite a bit of apprehension, so just take that into consideration while you're performing this test. Okay? Now that the tibia is subluxed, you're going to continue holding those forces that we just talked about, one through three, and you're going to move the patient's knee through flexion range of motion. Okay? It's extended right now. We're going to move it through flexion. Okay? Okay. So you're going through this knee flexion range of motion, and this person does have an ACL injury. And so what's going to happen at around 30 to 40 degrees of knee flexion, maybe about right here, is the tibia is going to reduce, or it's going to relocate back into its original position. Remember, when the knee was extended, it subluxed. Well, now, at this position, it's going to relocate back to its original spot. And this is due to tightness in the iliotibial band when the knee is flexed. Okay? And again, it occurs usually around 30 to 40 degrees of knee flexion. Okay? You can certainly keep going into knee flexion, but it will relocate at about 30 to 40 degrees. Now, in a normal healthy ACL, which is going to be a negative test, this is going to be painless, and there's going to be no signs of tibial subluxation. Now, remember, subluxation occurs when the knee is extended or straight. So if there's no subluxation, well, then there's no need for relocation or reduction, as we call it. Okay? So there would be no reduction at 30 to 40 degrees of knee flexion if there's no subluxation in the first place. right? Let's take a look at this one more time in real time. So we're going to bring the patient's lower extremity off the table about 20 to 30 degrees and apply a series of forces while the knee is extended. With my right hand right there, I just applied internal rotation. With my left hand over here, I'm going to apply the valgus force to the knee, and my right hand's also going to apply an axial load. While we maintain those forces, we're going to move through knee flexion range of motion. Now, in the case of an ACL injury, while the knee is extended right there, those forces should sublux the tibia. And then while maintaining those forces moving through knee flexion range of motion, again, the tibia would relocate or reduce back into position around 30 to 40 degrees of knee flexion. And those things would constitute a positive test.
Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.